Good evening. Welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. So the month is over and we're now in August. Hmm, that's crazy, right? This summer has flown by. So here's, here's the thing. COVID opened a whole new world for me in finding music. I had before COVID always gone out to live things and sought musicians through live performances and gotten them here by seeing them live, telling them that they were great and that I wanted them on my show. Well, COVID kind of shut that all down, right? But what it did was open up the avenue of looking online and seeing online and listening to other people say, check this person out online, right? And I have, a lot because of Terry Lachance, but I have found and seen many musicians because I saw what they did online. Whether they were out at an open mic and were filmed and I saw them, usually that's how it happens. They're out playing, performing, usually for someone that is connected to Terry Lachance because she's a powerhouse. But anyway, I'm getting off the roll here. What the thing is, is that I am exposed to so many more musicians because of the fact that I don't have to chase them all over the state. I can look at them from my phone or from my computer. I can find them all over the place just by looking at the little screen. That, my friends, is how we found this particular musician tonight. I hope that you're going to enjoy this young man. He has so much to offer and so much to give. I fell in love with his music right off the get-go. I, um, I believe that I sent him a message on Messenger and said, listen, <laughs> I do a little thing called a TV show. Will you come play for me? And he was all about it. We had a little chat. I told him not to wear glitter on my show, and he, he chuckled. So if you can chuckle at my bad jokes, then you belong on my show. Anyway, please, please, please help me welcome into your heart and into your home and into your ears, Harold Walker. All right. Uh, first song I'm going to play uh, is a, uh, it was written by Guy Clark. Uh, it was never actually recorded by Guy Clark. Um, Lyle Lovett recorded it on his album um, of the same name. This is called Step Inside This House. That painting hanging on the wall was painted by a friend. Gave it to me all down and out when he owed me ten. Don't look like much, I guess, but it's all that's left of him. And it sure is nice from right over here when the light's a little dim. Step inside this house, girl, and I'll sing for you a song. I tell you about just where I've been. Shouldn't take too long. Show you all the things that I own, my treasures, you might say. It couldn't be more than ten dollars worth. Brighten up my day This book of poems was given me by a girl I used to know I guess I read it front to back Fifty times or so 
It's all about the good life and staying at ease with the world. It's funny how I love that book and I never loved that girl. Step inside this house, girl, and I'll sing for you a song. I tell you about just where I've been. It shouldn't take too long. Show you all the things that I own, my treasures, you might say. It couldn't be more than ten dollars worth them brighten up my day. Hold this piece of glass to the light that's shining through the door. It's a prison glass, I found it on the road. Can't you see that tiny rainbow? It's not really a prism, I guess. Just kind of broke a funny way. I was on my way through Houston, and I was headed for L.A. Step inside this house, girl, and I'll sing for you a song. I tell you about just where I've been. Shouldn't take too long. Show you all the things that I own. Clinton, you might say it couldn't be more than ten dollars worth. Them brighten up my day. This guitar was given me by old man Thomas Gray. It's not too much to look at, but I play it every day. Been across this country four or five times, I guess. Between me and old man time, never, never got much rest. Step inside this house, girl, and I'll sing for you a song. I tell you about just where I've been. It shouldn't take too long. Show you all the things that I own. My treasures, you might say, it couldn't be more than ten dollars worth them brighten up my day. That's just about all I own, all I care to, I guess. Except this pair of boots, maybe, and that funny yellow vest. That leather jacket, that leather bag, and that hat hanging on the wall. Not too much, too much to carry, babe, could I see you again next fall? Step inside this house, girl, and I'll sing for you a song. i tell you about just where I've been, it shouldn't take too long. Show you all the things that I own, my treasures, you might say. It couldn't be more than ten dollars worth them brighten up my day. <laughs> Thank you. I love that song. Um, uh, next song I'm gonna play is a song of mine. Um, this is a song I actually started writing around this time last year. Um, I'd been writing a lot of like story songs about specific like, characters and things, and hadn't really written anything about like myself because I didn't want to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so so I just braved it and started um, writing about uh, a complicated relationship with uh, my sister, and. Um, she passed actually while I was writing the song, and so the meaning of it changed while we were doing it, um, or while I was writing it. But um, it was written in Connecticut and Maine, so went back and forth there. Um, but this is called Afford Us Peace.
chose You don't need our sympathy But either way we'd lose Villains in your fantasy Feeling like I fell, like somehow I played the clown. All my thoughts are saying, the whispers turn to shouts. I should have held my tongue, I should have shut my mouth.
Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. So I'm also um, a giant baseball nerd. No way. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got uh, listened to a lot of like podcasts about sabermetrics and analytics, um, and uh, I've always been fascinated by the animals that kind of that you find see on the field. Sometimes there's weird like player animal interactions. Sometimes cats like end up on there climbing walls and stuff. Um, so I thought about like what if a cat grew up in a baseball park and, uh, and then got really into um, sabermetrics and statistics and analytics. And uh, this is the song about that cat. <laughs> How cool. All right. Uh, this is called Woba Cat. And Woba stands for weighted on base average, in case you're wondering. <laughs> All right, here we go. She was born in the space between the bullpen And to stand where they sold chips and cheese And learn to be a kitten Underneath the right field and bleacher seats She learned to read a box score from a gang of literate mice and she would hook them up with the nacho cheese so they had to do it right They stole a laptop from the press box they taught her how to type The Wobba Cat knows that RBIs are overrated And Wobba Cat knows that sacrifice bunts are so outdated Wobba Cat knows your views on pitcher wins It's the product of your ignorance Wobba Cat doesn't feel bad Cause Wobba Cat knows She started following other teams And joined a fantasy league Poured herself into the research, checked Pakoda, consulted Zips, and of course her favorite player turned out to be named after Fish. And by the time she was three, she had her own blog, finding her way, asking bigger questions like if this thing different well, how different would it be and Woba Cat knows that RBIs are overrated and Woba Cat knows that sacrifice bunts are so outdated Woba Cat knows your views on pitcher wins it's the product of your ignorance Woba Cat doesn't feel bad cause Woba Cat knows some friends how to do math. She taught a possum to query SQL. She amassed quite the staff. And no one knew that they weren't people. Oh, squirrels and rakers, even rats. type no more she found a sunbeam found a sunbeam on the floor 
The staff all stood in silence as she stepped into the light. The next morning there was only one post on the site. A eulogy for a leader, for the one that changed their lives. She fulfilled her obligation. Cat knows that RBIs are overrated. And Robert Cat knows that sacrifice bunts are so outdated. Robert Cat knows your views on pitcher wins. It's the product of your ignorance. Robert Cat doesn't feel bad, no. Robert Cat doesn't feel bad. Robert Cat doesn't feel bad, cause Robert Cat knows. I don't know if that song is silly or sad yeah it's got a little close. bit of both right yeah this? while i was writing that um our cat the first cat I, I owned as like an adult he he passed away so i i kept getting to that third verse and like crying <laughs> i understand that yeah i do but the the song is so silly that it makes even the sad ending be yeah it's yeah it's good songwriting <laughs> my you. friend good songwriting <laughs> This is a um, this is another uh, song of mine. Um, I took kind of a big break from playing music for a period of time, um, and uh, and then came back to it after about like ten years, um, and uh, and started writing again. I hadn't written anything in, in about a decade, and um, then just I've just gone crazy ever since, just writing all sorts of stuff. Um, and this one is about the present. Um, the state of affairs and our, our uh, willful ignorance, if you will, in, in some parts of this country, so, or some people in this country. Um, this is called Old Man's War. It's a rigged game. We all play Working in double time For quarter pay It was built to grind you down With structures obscured We are agents of acquiescence the Harvesting fields of lies it's clear to me now that we don't want to be safe. We just want to be spent living with our minds closed. So we can't pretend that our minds are not broken. Treating children's lives just to fortify another bottom line. Gets what they deserve. Having love for fans with tyrants and bodies keeping score. The terrifying indifference of this old man's war. Indeed. 
Savior went the same year. Just months before, we should have seen the writing on the wall. And now is it too late to write the ship to put the train back on the tracks? Or is this our fate? Prophets of doom want us to believe that it's all over now. someone else's this um it's another songwriter from texas uh, this is a towns van zant song um, who's become a very influential songwriter for me um and uh like i haven't found a bad song yet so uh i just learned a bunch of them <laughs> uh this one's called loretta Says like a diamond shines, tells me lies I love to believe. Her age is always 22, her laughing eyes a hazel hue. Who spends my money like a waterfall, loves me like a woman or two. Do you want to do one more song and then come talk to me? Sure. 
Sounds like a plan. All right. All right. Um. This is another um, another song of mine. This is relatively new. I'm very proud of this song. Um, this is another one in the category of um, kind of like fun about like pop culture, but also kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I played it for a friend of mine. She was like, do you have any songs that aren't sad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because so I played that one and the, the cat song back to back. Uh, they liked them both, but they're, they're, they're very sad. <laughs> uh, but, you know, as Elton John said, sad songs say so much. So, um, so this is, uh, if you're a Star Wars fan, then you, you might pick up on the, uh, some of the references here. This is called Bad Motivator. You said meet me at the Tasha station when the second sun is setting in the sky. But I'd never see your face again or that lonely, desperate look in your eyes. Well, I knew someday you'd fly away. There are no heroes on a moisture farm. No glory in the jungled wastes. No adventure in my arms. I used to say. It included me. Well, I took a job in Anchorhead. It don't pay much, but it's something else to do. At night, I'm drowning in these endless skies, praying that I'll catch a glimpse of you. The failing of the light makes it feel like the dunes have turned to glass. A silent sea I'm sailing on, a mirror to the Said raiders hit your farm, left your aunt and uncle smoking in the sand. Well, no one's worked that farm in years. It's hard and haunted land. Wish it included me. Well, I'm glad you found your destiny. I wish it included me. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me remind you all that summertime is upon us. It's also almost over. If you haven't been down to the hygienic on Thursday nights, it's number one, it's free. Come on over and mic up. Um, number two, it's music. And number three, it's here in New London. Get out and celebrate music. Support live music. Support the hygienic. Support what's going on. We're back out in public. We can talk. We can sit. We don't have masks on. I was just looking at an event that happened three years ago. And um, everybody that was at it in 90 plus degree weather had masks on, even outside. It was horrible. We don't have to do that anymore. Get out and support the music, guys, and support the arts. And let's talk to Harold. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Grandma's Attic. It's so much fun to have you here. Your music is um, sad. <laughs> <laughs> Most of it. Yeah. Even your kit, kitty cat song about the baseball kitty cat, which is very goofy, has sad in mm. it. Are you a sad person? Um, so. Do you think you're a sad <laughs> yes and person? No. Um, so, like I said, I had, I had kind of taken a break. So my my father had passed, and then I kind of I stopped writing, and then um, I never really got back into music. I kind of had a weird relationship with it. Um, and then I lost some other people close to me. A father-in-law passed away. And um, I think I didn't want to come back to, I didn't want to confront like my feelings. Ah, um, I think there that's was. That's a thing. Yeah. So I think I avoided it for a long time. But the, not having that connection to, to music took a, a toll. It did. Um, it always does. Place. Yeah. I think that maybe what you need to hear, maybe what I need to say is that it's people like you that help people like me that can't write songs mm -hmm. that has I have a head full of emotions I'm a, I'm a pretty emotional person but sometimes I I don't know how to express them I don't know where to find the words mm -hmm. and I'm a word person I'm a writer I write things but not songs <laughs> I write dialect mm -hmm. and I, I write articles it's people like you that take feelings, especially sad or broken feelings, and turn them into something that I hear and I go, oh yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> that's what it's all about. So never forget that when you're writing music. It's so important for people like you that can express sad mm -hmm. in a song. Give us that. Yeah. There's a bunch of us out in the world that don't know how to express feelings without music. Mm -hmm. So your role in the universe is so important to us. You know, yeah. it's so important. I'm sorry that you lost a small portion. 10 years is a small portion mm -hmm. of what we have to give. You lost that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Now you're back. Yeah. And you're out there, you're doing open mics, and you're playing, and you're writing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So welcome back into Thank the you. fold. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna hear a happy song out of you eventually. We will. S okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you. you I, will. I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. I was on Grandma Dog's show, <laughs> rocking it. Up. No, I'm just kidding. I can't sing. But <laughs> what makes you sit down and actually write a song? Um, Besides the fact that it's sad. <laughs> so a lot of times it's just things get stuck, like ideas get stuck in my head. Um, and uh, like that, that last song, I was, uh, I was washing dishes and I was thinking about Star Wars because I, I, I'm obsessed and I think about it all the time. Um, and, uh, and I was like, what about the... the you and 50 million other people. Seriously. <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, what, you know, what about the people that were waiting for, for Luke at the Tashi station? He t says he's going there to pick up some power converters. His uncle says no. And then, and then the next day he's gone. Um, and I was like, oh, that, you know, that stinks for them. And I'm like, what if one of them was in love with him? Um, and, and about kind of writing about that and, right. uh, and that, you know, that unrequited love, which is, you know, it's, it's everywhere. Um, right. You know, it is. It's a thing you have to deal with. Like, so. It is. So you had lost your dad. Mm -hmm. Is your mom still around? My mom is uh, is still around. She actually um, lives with me and my wife um, on the nice. on the first floor. So sometimes that's a good thing. It's a great thing. Yeah. Um, How do the two prominent women in your life, your wife and mm -hmm. your mom, feel about your music and feel about you getting back into it? 
Um, they're really supportive. My mom's always been like my biggest fan. Um, you know, they they supported me when I started playing music when I was a teenager, and um, we even my my band used to practice in our basement, and they were my both my parents were absolutely lo you know loved it. They knew where I was. Um, ah, safe. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> not out causing trouble. <laughs> exactly. What kind of a band did you have? Um, so we're kind of like a blues uh, band. But I can see that. Yeah, so that's kind of what I started out playing. The music that really spoke to me at an early age was um, a lot of like R&B and soul. Um, I ended up with a tape of the California Raisins, of all things, um, but they just they did a bunch of, I don't know who, it wasn't actually the Raisins, but whoever <laughs> recorded it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, wait, <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember that album. Yeah. And they did a whole bunch, they had these dancing raisins mm. doing a whole bunch of covers. Yeah, they were doing Marvin Gaye. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you Can't Hurry Love, like, and I was right. like, I love this song. Right, right. <laughs> oh my gosh, I remember that album. I must have been about maybe 17 mm -hmm. when that came out. You're younger than me, so yeah, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were young. Oh my goodness, yeah. that's so cool. And how does your wife feel about your music? Uh, she she loves it. She's she's very supportive. Have you written a love song to her? I yet? have I actually. Um, I I wrote a song for her when we first started dating uh, about fifteen years ago that I still play. Um, and uh, yeah, it did so. Did it thrill her thrill her soul? Yes. Nice. <laughs> well, she married nice. me. So. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's a wonderful thing. When you're writing music, do you write the lyrics first or the chord progression song um, first? Which happens first? It for goes you? kind of. It kind of goes back and forth. Um, usually, I guess usually I start with the, the lyrics, but it's really kind of an organic um, thing. As you know, I'll sit around with my guitar sometimes and just just play, just jam, make up things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have these pieces of music that I that I like, but I don't know what to do with them, so I just store them. Uh, and uh, in fact, the uh, um, Woba Cat, but you know, I had that that little riff um, yep. going for for a little while, and it just kind of reminded me of like Three Dog Night or something. And I was like, I was like, this is a cool little riff. And then I, I came up with the idea for the the Woba Cat song. Poor cat. Um, yeah, <laughs> he lived a full life. <laughs> he <mind>. did, and he <laughs> gave back so much to baseball. Yeah, that's a wonderful <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's it's so funny. Now that you're back into songwriting. Um, do you have any plans to take some of that amazing songwriting and put it to oh, an Lord. album? <laughs> yes, yeah. That's definitely kind of the next the next place I, I want to go. I've gotten back into playing and performing and per performing um, you know live a lot. Um, so next thing is uh, going to be recording some some of these songs and. and do you know uh, some places to go do that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I was. Gonna drop some names. A oh, friend okay. of a friend of ours just just checked in when I went live with your mm -hmm. song. So Brian Winowski says, oh. "Yay, congratulations! Isn't he amazing?" <laughs> Brian is the nicest guy. I, he's so good. He's he's an amazing guy. He's an amazing performer, and it's always good to to see him perform, and to watch how he's encouraging others because mm. that's I think so important in our music community. Yeah. Where are some of the places that people can go to see you play? Um, so. August 9th and 10th, um, which is a Wednesday and a Thursday, if I have the dates correct. I'll be at uh, the 9th. I'll be at the Rocky Hill Farmers Market, and then the 10th, I'll be at the new Farmers Market in Guilford at the fairgrounds. Which nice, is awesome Farmers Market. It's really great. Okay. Um, uh, I love playing the Farmers Markets. I started doing it a couple of years ago when I first started getting back in. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, the market master for for the the Guilford um, Farmers Market is, is a super nice guy, and um, you know kept uh, invited me back. And it's it's wonderful because I, I really I've met people there. I've actually gotten shows through vendors that work there, and uh, and it's just it's just a wonderful you know the local vendors, and it's a wonderful environment, and you get to see. People having fun and, and kids will sit and listen. And, and uh, buying organic kind of stuff. Yeah. Homemade bread and homemade cannolis and homegrown everything. <laughs> I was just at the Groton Farmers Market yesterday and uh, oh my gosh, I had to leave. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I always come home with like a bunch of stuff. And I'm right? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, and if you're playing, some of that stuff has been gifted to mm -hmm. you by the vendors, yeah. right? I've so that me. makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got tipped in bok choy once. That was cool. Tipped in <laughs> bok choy. There's a song in that somewhere. Yeah, you know what? There is. 
So you got two farmers markets. Mm -hmm. You do want to put out an album. There's a bunch of people out there that are ready to have you in their studio. I'm sure they're vying for your attention mm -hmm. as we speak. Once <laughs> they see this up on YouTube, they're going to be like, ring, ring, ring. <laughs> you want to come? You want to come record in my studio? Yeah. There's some really good ones. There's some really good concerts. Who are some of your influence? Besides, I, I mean, you dropped a couple of names, but mm -hmm. who are some of the people that really influenced you? And at what age did you realize you were being influenced in a way that made you want to play music? Um, I suppose I was around like 12 or 13. It was like middle school. Um, and uh, the music that I, I was listening to that, that really made me want, want to perform and play guitar um, you know, it was like classic rock, like Led Zeppelin. I mean, that's, I bought a Les Paul because uh, I wanted to be Jimmy Page. <laughs> Who didn't? Yeah. <laughs> you either wanted to be him or you wanted to be with him. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and sometimes both. It was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so at yeah, the Doors, like I loved that kind of music. And then um, I found uh, Elton John when my um, brother-in-law passed. He left um, all his CDs. And he, I didn't realize this, but he was a huge Elton John fan. He had like 10 or 12 albums, and, uh, and I got totally hooked. Oh, sorry. What was your first Elton John album that you listened to? Oh, the first album. Probably, I think we had like the, the greatest hit tapes in my car. My, my mom had those in the car. Oh, wow. So, um, but maybe the first, the first full album might have been Honky Chateau, which has... Uh, oh, wow. Uh, it's it's amazing record. music on yeah. that album. It's funny because, like I said, I'm older than you, and my first album was Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Oh, yeah. And I had the fold-out album. It had all the songs and all the all illustrations and all the words. And then that album made a comeback when Lady Di died. Mm -hmm. That whole album made a comeback. And I had never stopped listening to Elton John, but all of a sudden, the words, the meanings changed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, our country and the people in it had been through so much that all the words to all those songs took on a new perception, and that's so cool. And Sir Elton <laughs> John has now made it through the ranks, and I think he's on his final tour. Yeah, yeah, he I think says they did the last show at Dodger Stadium. So uh, that's crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, it's wild. But all these people that we listen to as children are now doing that. Um, I have tickets to see Jethro Tull at the oh, Mohegan yeah. Sun, and I've been a fan since I was a, a, a young one. Mm -hmm. And um, m my wife got me center stage, row ten. Oh wow! Center <laughs> stage, center stage, row ten. I'm like. <laughs> So I'm really excited about yeah. that. Ian Anderson has been um, a revelation in music changing by bringing woodwind instruments yeah. onto stage, right? So yeah, that's exciting, but um, we're here to talk about you. <laughs> I was if, in a Jethro Tull cover band in college, actually. Were you? Yeah. Were you? One of my good friends is a, a great flute player, uh, and he loved Jethro Tull, so we... Oh my like goodness. A, so you'll want to watch for the... Um, October issue of Sound Waves. Mm -hmm. um, somebody that you may have met in your life is doing an interview with Ian Anderson oh, wow. and is going to be writing about the concert that they have coming up oh, at the nice. Mohegan <laughs> Sun on the last weekend of October. Oh, wow. So that, that will be in October Sound Waves. So that just a little hint mm -hmm. to look for something along those lines. Yeah. It would be a big deal. <laughs> So, <laughs> I'm not trying to say too much, <laughs> but so you had some great influences. I think that, that Elton John being an influence, I'm surprised that you don't play piano. Mm. I tried to learn piano. Um, did you? When I was a Did uh, you have one in your home? Yes, yeah. We had a, like a huge, up, uh, it was a big upright piano um, that we got. I think it was on like the WTIC tag sale or something in the morning. Right, right, right. And my dad went and got it when they you know, got movers to come in. Um, and I, you know, I was taking guitar lessons, and I was taking voice lessons, and then I added piano, and it was, you know, I was a teenager and, and kind of flaky, and it was just, it was a lot of practicing and a lot of, uh, <laughs> and so the piano just didn't, uh, I don't know, just kind of fell by the wayside. And but that's okay, yeah. that's okay. But I do believe that every house should have a piano. Mm. It's, it should be like, every house has a couch, every house should have a piano. Yeah. Every, 
everybody should be able to sit down and plunk out the eight notes yeah. and know what they are. That just an opinion from an old woman. It's just so wonderful if you know if, if there's somebody there that knows how to play and uh, you can you know everybody can sing along. Right. I love doing that at like Christmas. That's just like the best time. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah. It's it's an instrument that is easy to play if you if you read music and it and it's so welcoming to have people stand around and sing. That's yeah. it's such a thing. We have a pian of course have a piano in my house, but at a party Christmas in July this couple weeks ago. And um, this guy sat down and played for hours. Wow. He just sat there and played because he could. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's also, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, where do you think your music's going to take you in the next five years? Um, that's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, like I said, I want to get something recorded. Um, you know, I'd really like to, to collaborate more. Um, with other people, it's. Do you have some people you'd like to collaborate with right off the top? <laughs> yeah. Who, who are they? Uh, well, mostly like people I know, friends, the people I've played with in the past. I have uh -huh. a friend who lives in Boston, um, who he's in a band called uh, Trailer Swift, um, which they just released their second album. Uh, okay. They're like a punk band, but they're they're great. Um, I like punk. Punk's one of my favorite genres. Yeah. I do I do a few punk songs. On <laughs> cool. Yeah. On your guitar, you, you yeah. do punk covers. I play some Bad Religion. Um. No. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's fun yeah that's so much fun <laughs> so any local guys that have been here maybe that um, you want to collaborate with so um, you know I've, I've met Brian uh, Wanoski I'd, I'd love to, to play with him again we I was playing open mics that he was hosting and during yep. the winter and I kept I don't know I, I went got sick like three times in like two months and and kind of and didn't go back so I'd, I'd like to reconnect um, you know, with him, the nice thing about the open mics is everybody can kind of play together, you know, and um, I like that vibe. Um, there's been um, other people I've met, uh, I don't know if the, the shirt I'm wearing actually, Stephen Peter Rogers, um, who is a Connecticut musician and um, songwriter, and met him last year at the Connecticut Folk Festival. And yep. he's, he's got a studio and he offered, to, you know, he's like, oh, show me some stuff. And he, he's just such a great guy and a great songwriter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to do more of that. I have a lot of friends that are artists, visual artists, um, so I kind of like to do, you know, record some of these songs and have um, some friends, like, kind of come up with some concept art. You know, I've got the, the Woba Cat song. I've got, um, I've got lots, I like to write about characters and stories, so I've got a lot of different, different cool stories that... that uh, well, you do it, and do. when you get it done, I know where you can promote it. Okay. There's a TV show and a radio show mm -hmm. that both love to play brand new records. Okay. So you'll bring them back, we'll put your CD up and show it to the world, and if you come to the radio show, we'll play it on the air. Oh, perfect. How's that, that sound? That sounds great. I have to stop the interview because, as always, I run out of town because I talk too much, but would you be um, willing to take us out with a song? Sure, yeah. I'd Thank you so much, yeah, Harold, no for coming to Grandma's <laughs> Attic. You have to unplug. Oh, that's right, I'm tethered. Yeah. I love that word. So, that being said, Harold's going to take us out with a song. Until then, do me a favor. Check on your neighbors. You have children that have no shoes and socks on. The tar is hot. You have elderly neighbors. Please make sure that they have moving air, whether it's just a fan or AC, and fresh water. It's important that we take care of our neighbors. This is our community. I love you guys all very much, and I will see you next week. You can find us also on Facebook, the Grandma's Attic Music Review Facebook page. Okay? I'll see you all next week. Bye. All right. Um, take us out with uh, another, this is another song by Towns Van Zandt. Um, I played it earlier. Um, this is a, he was one of these songwriters who kind of hung out with all these other songwriters, him, Guy Clark, uh, Steve Earle, uh, Nancy Griffith, and they all kind of like did each other's songs, and I really love that, that, um, that community that they had. And this is, this is a song, I actually heard Guy Clark's version of this first, um, and it's been covered a bunch, uh, but this is called To Live Is To Fly, and I, I just absolutely love this song and love playing it, so uh, here we go.
Won't say I need you, babe Won't say I love you, babe But I'm gonna get you, babe And I will not do you wrong Living's mostly wasting time And I waste a share of mine But it never feels too good So let's not take too long You're soft as glass And I'm a gentleman Got the sky to talk about And the world to lie upon Days up and down they come Like rain on a conga drum Forget most, remember some But don't turn none away Everything is not enough Nothing's too much to bear Where you been is good and gone All you keeps the getting there To live is to fly All the low and the high so shake the dust off of your wings and the sleep out of your eyes. Goodbye to all my friends, it's time to go again. Think of all the poetry and the picking down the line. The system here The bottom's low and the treble's clear But it don't pay to think too much On the things you leave behind I may be gone But I won't be long I'll be bringing back the melody And the rhythm that I find got holes to fill and them holes are all that's real some fall on you like a storm sometimes you dig your own and the choice is yours to make and the time is yours to take let them dive into the sea some toil upon the stone to live is to fly all the low and the high so shake the dust off of your wings and the sleep out of your eyes. So shake the dust off of your wings and the tears out of your eyes. Thank you. Thank you very much.